Hi, Hi, everybody. I'm here in jolly old England in the most beautiful setting you can possibly imagine. Last time I introduced you to a collection in Florida. It was 88 degrees. I'm now in 39 degrees and halfway across the world because I want you to be able to see some of these incredible collections that I am privy to because that's how we learn and that's how this gets shared around the world. So I am so honored that Hilary Polly has brought us into her home and is showing us her collection. I, I feel honored she allowed me to do it to show you. So here we are, but I just wanted to show you as I walked in the door under a table, look what I found, this nice huge bag. So I don't need the John box when I have a Toys R Us bag and who's gonna know what's inside? But it's our secret, because we'll rearrange as we go and put things back in a semblance of order and I'll have my John bag <laughs> full of goodies. Well, you so, deserve it. I do deserve it, don't I? You I do. work hard and I travel to I bring do. these things to you. Exactly. So I, you I deserve, deserve a little something, thing. something. I do. So come on, I think we'll start with the American Bears. Okay, virtual conventioneers, this is so exciting. John is giving us his highlight tour of Hillary Polly's museum collection. Now, mind you, when I came here, I walked into this room and my jaw dropped. There is so many beautiful things, but I had to laugh. Here we are in this beautiful place in England, no less, and I discovered an entire shelf of BMC Bears. BMC Bears are Bruin Manufacturing Company. They started manufacturing in 19, late 1906, and by 1908, the company had stopped manufacturing. That was the last time that they uh, were producing and advertised in Playthings magazine. One of the things that distinguishes them, and very few early American bears were marked, is that they have this wonderful label. Oh, it says BMC, it's a silk label, and it was attached in the seam to each side of the foot, as you can see. The other distinguishing mark they had was this wonderful vertically stitched nose. Look at this guy. He's absolutely incredible. He has the label, just so clear. Love that. And he has that great vertically stitched nose. Most bears, American and German, were stitched horizontally into kind of like a point, like the Stife bears were, because they all tried to copy the Stife imports at the time. They did theirs vertically, which is a great way to distinguish what they are. They also used shoe buttons, and they also used glass eyes. Some were amber glass, some were white with black pupils. I'll show you a couple different examples. But this guy is just so sweet. Another distinguishing thing that they did in the early bears was they had five claws. One, two, three, four, five. We're not quite sure when they stopped using five claws on early bears, but we think there it was somewhere around 1908, maybe 19, late 1907, as a cost-cutting situation. And you wouldn't think so, but I have an old article about BMC. And it said they could turn stuff ear and eye the bear in a minute and a half. So these women would sit in these factory rooms with gas lighting, with piles of Excelsior and K-Pock, and they would get these done in that short a period of time. So they did, you know, try as hurry as much as they could because they were by the piece. That's how they got paid. But I really like this guy. I, I really <laughs> like him a lot, you know. <laughs> He's not the biggest one. The one in the back there is much bigger, but he talked to me. So he's going in the John bag. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. I mean it. <laughs> we won't. Rachel signed an, an NDA. An NDA. And you guys did when you uh, when you joined. Just kidding. But That's right. But, Here's another <laughs> one. Here's another one. Oh, he is darling. And he's got the clear glass eyes. And notice the vertically stitched nose. He's missing his label, but you can see where it was with the lighter color felt right there. So if you see one that you think might be a BMC, but you don't have the label, look in the side seams because there will be like right here, there's like a blue, a little black line in the seam. And that's where the ribbon would have gone across. Mm. 
I mean, so rare. These are rarer than Stifes. They were only done for about two, two and a half years at the most. Oh, that's And incredible. she has a whole shelf full. So, you know, we're just going to kind of make this look a little different. Maybe she'll be confused. <laughs> at the same period of time, actually a little bit later, are the wonderful, wonderful ideal bears. I love this guy. He is really fantastic. He has been truly loved. Ideal. They say they were the first teddy bear manufacturer. I'm not so sure about that. Because they said the first ones were after the Berryman Bear in 1902, the cartoon that was done in the Washington Post. Well, the thing is, that cartoon probably didn't make it to New York, where the Mictum's confectionery shop was. So I feel that the first time they advertised a teddy bear in 1908 is probably when it was kind of manufactured, was around 1908. That does not make them any less special, but as far as being the first teddy bear and the inventor of the teddy bear, I'm not quite so sure about that. Stife still holds that. But the way, look at the classic ideal head, mm. this wonderful triangular shape, and you can see how they slope down. That is so typically ideal. Another way, if you're looking for an ideal bear, let's see here, is the pads are very long and pointed. And the foot pads, if you notice, come to a real sharp point. They rolled in the pads. So that's a way you can distinguish them. Interesting. Yeah. And they have the wide head and the low set ears. And he just has such a great face. Oh, he's darling. Another early teddy bear manufacturer were called Harman, H-A-R-M-A-N. And the way you see those usually is their mouths came to like a smile and they had twill inset nose. This is very typical Harman. And you can see in the collector's history of the teddy bear, what they looked like. There's a great old photograph of the Harmon Bears. And they were manufactured in about 1907, and they stopped advertising around 1910. A lot of these early American companies went out of business in 1908, and in 1910, our country had an economic slowdown. So a lot of these companies did stop by that time. Mohair was more expensive and hard to get, Excelsior was hard to get, so a lot of them quit manufacturing. Ideal is one of the few that kept manufacturing. But Harmon, this is a great, great Harmon piece. This is another one back here. Actually, let me pull him out. He's another rare bear. Very few people even realize what these are. These were made by Gilmer. Hmm. G-I-L-M-U-R. And they were early 1900s, the ads show, and they show this mouth. A great uh, embroidered mouth. Sometimes they had a, f I've had one with a full felt tongue that comes out. They look like Etna. A lot of times they're mistaken for ideal, but they're actually very, very rare. And I've only seen two other ones, one that I've had with the full felt tongue and this one, and then uh, Linda Mullins also had one in her collection. So he's just a great he bear. Darling? And look at this ribbon. The and again, playground and recreation. Yep, Los Angeles. Okay. And here he is living in England. In England. And notice the five claws. This means he's early. One, two, three, four, five. Amazing. He's really special. Notice his paw pads don't come to a point, really, like the ideals do. They're actually sewn in. They're not rolled in and then sewed up the top. They're actually sewed in in an oval. You know, I really like him. <laughs> I was wondering what you were going to do about that. Yeah, he's rare. And I love him. And you know, here. You've been working hard. <laughs> she, yeah. Look, he deserves pride of place. <laughs> All right, virtual conventioneers, isn't this just the absolute best? This is such a treat. Okay, we're moving on to the next case. 
<laughs> I mean, this You're could like... be a four-hour program. <laughs> I have to cut it down to 40 minutes. Do bear with me. So if I ramble on or talk too fast, it's because I'm overexcited and I'm on a time crunch. And I have to get this bag filled before I go and stashed somewhere so they won't see me take it. We're vapor locking. This is so exciting. We're right there with you, John. <laughs> you look you look like the, the bear burglar. <laughs> <laughs> After this, no one will invite me to their home. <laughs> oh, okay, now this case. Okay, here we go. Another early teddy bear in American manufacturer that Hillary has, again, an entire shelf full. Oh, my full gosh, these are amazing. Are Etna bears. In the early 1900s, Steiff did not have an exclusive with any company. And George Bordfeldt wanted the exclusive with Steiff. They advertised that they carried the Steiff Bears in 1906 and 1907. However, they were not the sole, manuf or sole distributors of Steiff. So they put their money behind another toy company that they could have be the sole distributors. That was Aetna Toy Company. The early Aetnas were started in about 1906. They're advertised... As before you buy the import, check out our quality, Etna Toys. They did rabbits and cats. And many of you have seen the Puss in Boots with the felt ears with the little made on velvet boots. Those were not Steiff. Those were actually made by Etna in about 1907. So she has got an incredible array. I'm going to show you one here to give you an idea of how to identify one if you should come across them. First of all, they used cardboard in their foot pads under the felt. They originally were marked on the feet with an oval that said Etna inside. However, the ink would be absorbed into the felt and it would disappear. So a lot of those, you will never, ever, ever see the, the um, Etna on the foot. And if it, nope, you can't see it on there either because it's absorbed into the felt. I've only seen a couple of them where they actually have the Aetna imprint still there. But this guy is really small. They came, the earliest ones came with shoe button eyes, the very early 1906. And then they switched in about 1908, 1909, maybe 1910 to the amber glass. Mm. What so a, what a personality. their nose was done vertically, but it was done over a piece of silk. And I wondered if she had, ah, let's see this guy. Yes. See the black silk? A very mm -hmm. fine thread was sewn over the black silk. And that's how you distinguish the Etna. It has a shield shape to it. If you see that there, it had the low, wide set ears, which were pulled tightly down the side of the head. And again, he has the felt and his wonderful felt pads. So these were very, very popular. By 19, the end of 1912, George Bortfeldt achieved what they had wanted, the sole distributorship of Steiff toys in the United States. So by 1913, they were distributing mostly Steiff toys. They still did kind of represent Aetna, but not to the extent they did before they got the distribution of the Steiff. So these are just, I love this guy. Look at him with his, he obviously has a boo-boo. And everyone should have a velvet cast. Oh, so sweet. And look at this one. I mean, just beautiful examples. Like I say, to have a whole shelf full is, is it's insane. It's remarkable. I mean, it's You've just... You've never seen... I mean, look at this great bell collar. Wow. In all sizes. Just... I'm in awe. Then our next shelf down is another very, very rare bear. It's called Hecla. They were made by Horseman Toy and Novelty Company in about 1906. By the end of 1908, they were no longer advertised. Horsemen, you may know from the Horseman dolls, the Bruckner dolls, the Horseman Babyland rag. Well, they also did bears. This was called the Hecla bear. And it's distinguished by this wonderful rust nose in a vertical shape. They used rust yarn. The earliest ones that I've seen have shoe button eyes and then they switched to glass 
probably soon after, I would assume. And notice one, two, three, four, five. Five claws shows mm. how early they are. And they were done mostly in a cream, a creamy type fabric with the rust is a great contrast. Now, I've seen quite a few over my years, but that's been over 40 years. And here she has an entire shelf full. I think she's trying to corner the market. <laughs> I think you could probably... And you know, God, he's gorgeous. Yeah. He is just, you know, I don't have that size. <laughs> and look at this guy. Look at him. Just I love him. look at him. So much personality. Like an old grandpa just hanging out in England, enjoying his friends. Oh. I mean, look at the profile. What do you guys think? Wonderful. He's just, and the size on this one back here is just wonderful. She has, I think, every size. I've seen one bigger, but I've only seen one in 40 years. So she's pretty well got every size they did. <laughs> now, at the same time, or earlier on, Horseman um, made a bear that was wide set ears and a very thick, wide, horizontal nose. They advertised, they were the first company to advertise Teddy's Bears, meaning Teddy's Roosevelt. That was dropped by the end of 1908 to Teddy Bear. But in 1906, they actually put the first ad in Playthings magazine. They called it Teddy's Bear. No one had done it before then. So it's very interesting. Hmm. It wasn't Ideal who first advertised in 1908. It was Horseman that first advertised Teddy's Bear. That is a great bit of trivia. Another wonderful bear was made by the Havana Toy Company of New York. I remember them from your last program. Yes. They're very rare. Of course, Hillary has one. <laughs> and notice the wonderful yarn nose. It's not Hecla. They did the brown nose on different colors. I've seen them on white, and I've seen a darker brown and this color. But they're super rare. And he's got such a smug personality. <laughs> oh, he's cute. Uh, again, another very rare bear, only advertised for a couple years. And then now, look at this white Etna here. Oh, I just saw one with the Etna stamp. Uh -oh. I'm still oh. discovering people. <laughs> You're along with me discovering these things. Look at this guy. He's just white and perfection. The silk underneath with the thin thread, the white glass eyes in white. Oh, man, my bag's not big enough. He is so cute. And now, oh, oh. oh if I break a door. We're, we're down here. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, wait a what minute. What a treat. It is a treat. The Etna stamp. Amazing. That is still in the felt. Take a screenshot, everybody. Oh, so, so rare. His nose has been loved off, but he still retains his wonderful identification. Very early. Wow. Very, very rare and special. That's just like a one in a lifetime um, thing that you um, just... And he's got that remarkable here. hump. And we're just going to pull this one forward. Anybody have a magic marker? We'll just put it on something else. <laughs> oh, Oh, here she has the Gilmer with the, the felt. Here, see the felt? It's been come off, but there you're still a piece. Yeah. If you ever want a great identification source guide, it's Pat Schoonemaker's Teddy Bear Collector's History of the Teddy Bear. Great old catalog pages. She would research at the, um, you know, the Copyright Office in New York. And she would get these wonderful identification tools. It's a great book to have in your collection. It helps with a lot of these early bears to identify them. Because most of the early American bears were not marked. Very mm -hmm. few were. Mm -hmm. It's just only by seeing them and holding them that you get to know who they are. Absolutely. I, I still have so much to learn. And I've not seen everything there is because that takes the fun out of it. And so many things still you think that I could identify them. You can't. They just weren't marked. Mm -hmm. They were produced by the millions in the early years between 1905 and 1910. Mm -hmm. And they were just done in mass for department stores and toy stores. This guy is interesting. I love him. I have him in several different sizes. He's a very, very 
distinct pattern with the triangular shaped nose. I've had them in shoe buttons and I've also had them with the clear white, you know, glass eyes. But I don't know who made them, but they're definitely early 1900s American. I have a picture in my collection of a little girl holding one that's dated on the back 1907. So I, I know they're very early and they came in different sizes and I've had them in several different colors, including blue. Wow, I would love to see a blue yeah. one. Look how so, sweet. I mean, it's just what, and they're such a happy, I mean, they're just it, happy, it happy just faces. It just looks like the, a bear. It's yeah. just so good. Now, John, why, why is this one still hanging out down here? Well, I have to get up to put them in my bag. My bag's over there. Shh. <laughs> my drill business. <laughs> Can we discuss that hump? Look at this wonderful I mean, hump. Real bears have hump. Grizzlies have humps. So Stife, you know, when they did theirs, they put a hump on the back of their bears. American companies really did copy Stife. They wanted the look of the foreign imports because teddy bears were all the rage. In 1906, 1907, when they hit the market, especially on the Eastern shore, like New Jersey on the boardwalk, every little boy, every little girl had to have a teddy bear. So Stife did bring them in first, I believe, and our companies saw it and immediately got to work manufacturing their own. Wow. But he is very special, I really love him. It's, it's a Toys R Us bag, but we should have crossed out the us and put toys for John. Great idea. <laughs> so let's close this up. Virtual convention. What a treat is it is for us to be here in London, England, and to be at this gorgeous, wonderful estate where we can just have a, 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 a tour led by John Port of this amazing collection. She has a case of some of the most beautiful, beautiful French pieces. Oh, look at this. Oh, he has no key. We can't open this. Boy, she oh, saw well, we me can... coming. <laughs> I'm surprised she let me have any keys. This is a wonderful fat app. The white bear, and he, I believe he still has his ear identification right here. Can you I see this? I can see this? it. Yep. Uh, I'll get right there. Well, He's we can see it. He's just gorgeous. And look at this wonderful little Massey right here. Oh, I love it, the color. That's, that says John Paul's Massey. <laughs> I'm sure that's what that's meant to be. Yes, we must alert them. Those pink eyes are wonderful. And then look at this with his original button. So I Stipe mean, wasn't the only one that did buttons. No. In the early days, Strunz, um, they also put something in the ear. Bing. Stife got a hold of things. They sued them. Oh. And, you know, and they had to remove them or put them in other parts. So, you know, it was a thing where Stife actually did try to sue Silberstein, which was a, an early company, saying that they were the only ones that could make teddy bears and that Silberstein couldn't. Silberstein won the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So that's, or we wouldn't have millions of teddy bears now. We just have Stife. So, you well, know, there was a lot of, in the early days, working this all out. I mean, look at this. They're all sewing. She has a little this factory. This is so cute. It's like a little sweatshop. It is. It's but, a little but a kind English of, sweatshop. It's a little English bear sweatshop, and it is the sweetest one I've ever seen. I mean, look at here. They're sewing their foot pad. Oh, my gosh. Their little hand pad. It's the sweetest. It's all different colored and kinds of sewing machines. To put something like this together, you guys understand, it takes a lot of time and effort and searching. And so what a treat to see it all together. But she's so clever. The room doesn't only have the rarest of the rare. It's it's clever. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a key. Oh, good. Yeah, I love keys. Now, this frog. Now, mind you, look at this Wind in the Willow set. Now, I'm not quite sure who made this, whether it was Farnell or... But it's early, and I've never seen anything like that. Look at that. That's incredible, isn't it? The detail. This frog this just blows Look my mind. Yeah. Just so special. I mean, how lucky. And then look at this piece. Now look. this is a color you don't see very often. Purple. Oh, look at the color on him. It's a Chad Cubby. Chad Valley Cubby. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, look at, look at the personality. Oh. It's so big, she'll notice it. So I'll put him back and... <laughs> she, she might notice the purple color gone, but you yeah. could probably swipe a 
I'm, I'm sure I have plenty <laughs> to oh, choose look, from. Look at this. The Oh, don't you just love his little out? Look at his little English outfit. Now, this is not a, a um, you know, it's not a bear, but look at this. It looks like the Einko Fifi's, but it's dolls. Oh. It's just wonderful. Einko did Tubby and Fifi. They were the cat and dog. They were made by Einko, and they are just fantastic. And I know several of you out there collect them. And this is a treat for you. Oh, Look at it this. Is. Oh, it's wonderful. Isn't he special? The eyes are still so <gasps> sparkly. Oh, he's, I love him. Oh. We need to put him in the Rachel I, bag. <laughs> oh, Rachel, you didn't bring a bag. Do <laughs> you want a red space in my bag? Sure. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that. We'll negotiate space. <laughs> we'll come back for him. Oh, oh he's so cute. Poor Hillary's going to have to come and rearrange her cases by the time I'm done. Hillary has been the most amazing hostess, bringing us here to enjoy and to, and to film all of these wonderful programs. No, really, to let me some, someone come. Oh, oh, see, it's all wanting to go home with me. I think this is a sign. Okay. To let me in their home, much less let me in with all this stuff, with a shopping bag right around, you know, at the corner. I mean, just look at these. Look at this. This wonderful, wonderful Chad Valley in the, the red. The richness of the red is just incredible. <gasps> just so special. I mean, we really are. And it has its to original be, um, the original tag right label on the foot. right on the foot. I mean, we are just so totally this is blown just, away by all is. of this. It is such an incredible treat. So, All right, we're just zipping around the corner here to her Farnell case. I think everybody should have a Farnell case. I don't know <laughs> why I don't have a Farnell case. But you're going to have one after oh, this. Oh, I, I know I am. Look at these. I mean, they're just gorgeous. A Farnell case. Yeah. I can't even believe it. I think I'm going to start selling Farnell cases. <laughs> and you get the case we'll start and then here. you fill it up. <laughs> But I look like at that this, idea. Look at this red guy. Oh, look at that. Oh, the 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 richness of the red look again at the is color. just absolutely amazing. Look at How the old color. is this bear, John? He's probably from the 1920s, 1930s. Isn't he special? <gasps> wow. And then look at this guy with his label, his Alpha Toys label. Wow. Oh, and look at his. Look at his great eyes. Look at that label. Alpha amazing. Toys. Farnell's Alpha Toys. Now, a way you can also tell Farnell, they did a webbed foot um, thread. Let's see if I can find one in here that'll give you a really good example. Oh, look at this, everybody. Right Isn't this, this amazing? One's a perfect example. Have you guys picked one of your favorite ones yet? I have. I've picked about six of each. <laughs> look at this. This. Look at that. Is wow. very unique to Farnell. The stitching, the web stitching. And look at this mohair. It's wonderful. It's just like it just it came out new. of the store. Yeah. I'm liking him a lot. He's big, but she won't notice if I spread things out. Oh, you just kind of, that's how, that's how it works. Now, John, this one is very interesting. He's, um. Look at this. Look, look, have you ever seen anything like I that? I haven't. What does she say about this? It's a puppet. It's a Farnell puppet. Oh. <gasps> Wow. <laughs> oh, man. Look at that. Look How at the way they did that. And he's got the web stitching. <gasps> That's really special. How does a puppeteering work? I guess I you don't know, I attach guess. it. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I don't either, but he's How very clever. Okay, Rachel, that's got to go in the John bag. We'll swing back by and get we'll, that. Well, yeah, well, on our, yeah. on our way out, we'll make sure that we get... Now, Omega's a, uh, another maker that I've heard yes. of, but I don't Omega know much about. Omega is a British manufacturer, and she's got some great pieces. Look at this tea cozy. you got to see this tea cozy. So rare. Oh, how cute. Oh, my gosh, everybody. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. They also did different animals. I've seen a tea cozy. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, it's darling. Look at the original label. That's amazing. 
It says the last word in novelties, Omega, made in London, England. I've also seen a dog, and there's another piece I've seen in the tea cozies, but look, at it's just absolutely minty, mint, mint. Oh. He, he looks new again, and yeah. how old is he? He's probably 1930s. Amazing. And then she's also got the Omega Record Teddy, which is really a wonderful piece. A lot of you may have seen the um, Stife Record Teddies. This oh, is the cute. Omega. Look at that. Oh, look. And again, and I just love seat. a great hump. Yeah. On a bear. It's just, yeah. No comment. <laughs> you guys know what I meant. <laughs> anyway, look at the character. I mean, it's just amazing. So rare. You just don't see them. I'm so honored that I get to present this. This, I wish, you know what I was just thinking? This this was worth coming to London for. I mean, oh, to, yeah. to be able to see something like this. Oh, yeah. And, this, and, this has and, made my whole trip yes. just coming in here. Absolutely. I mean, I'm just so happy. Absolutely. I mean, just to get to see some of these rare pieces I've only seen in books mm -hmm. or, held, you know, never held them in person. It's, it's a, a treat for all of us. And then she said, this is her big guy's case. Look at this Stife. He's a Stife probably from around maybe 1907. So John's opening the case, but I'm just gonna move over here. Look at the beautiful garden and scenery that we are surrounded by out here in England. It's okay. just amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah, unfortunately my John's bag is not big enough for this guy, but look at him. This is incredible. The size and, and just the face. Wow. He's, he's got his FF button right there in his ear. Wow, and I love his coat. And then look at this piece over here. We have the wonderful Farnell. Look at this, with the foot pads. And he's just, his fabric is just minty, minty, mint. And look at the wonderful stitching. Out of, out oh, of this world. It is. I mean, and look at the one in white. Uh, is you this know? Farnell it, again? Yeah. Wow. I mean, can you imagine no. having one in gold Multiple. and white well, in this I... huge size <laughs> you got to yeah i feel you should Everybody. and look at the, these other shaggy the early oh. farnells and that shaggy this is a collector's dream to get it with that long luxurious mohair you know just to see one is really special you guys can almost feel the bear in your hands when you're watching this video it's so great to get just so close and you can see the detailing. Just Look at this wonderful stife right here in the middle. Oh, oh. it's such a quintessential Yeah, with that look, the stife. big hump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And look at the red felt showing from underneath the, the felt pad down there. Just like a window into his soul. I just love that. Oh, look at that. Oh, how could you not absolutely love them? Everyone loves them. And then here we have the Stife Skittle set with the Kingpin and his four bear friends. Look at that. The rarest of the rare of the rare. And we're going to get through this glass. They're fragile or they'd be in the jaw. They will never make it home to America, I'm afraid, through customs and everything. Or they would be, look at this. And she might notice since they're look the only at, thing yeah, on the shelf. There's only five on the shelf. <laughs> I should probably wait for something. She might, look at oh, this. Oh, it's so sweet. They're so, so rare. I and mean, to find them all. Oh, look at this. An intact set. Oh, how magical. And I love it too, because if you look closely, the way they do the blanket stitch on the ears and a lot of the early little stice, they did the blanket stitch on the ears. You just, it's heaven. And then, Absolutely Peter heaven. Bear. If you don't know about Peter Bear, Peter Bear was made in 1925 by the Gebruder Susenguth Company of Germany. Say that 10 times fast. Gebruder Susenduf. That's very, close of. enough. <laughs> and so they didn't sell well because they frightened children. So in 1979, Carol Stanton owned Living Dolls magazine here in England, and she was a good friend of my mom's. And she advertised, I believe it was, I want to say 175 of these. They were 175, 
I believe, dollars. That's a lot. They, that was a lot at that time. That didn't stop my mother from buying three of them. <laughs> you go, girl. That's right. In brown and gray, and then she got one in gold. They are so wonderful. I love then, them. Years later, my mom was also a doll artist, and one of the collector friends traded her one for one of her bears because she said it scares my other dolls and toys oh geez so these were mint they came in their original boxes his tongue waggles and his eyes move back and forth look at this tipped fabric absolutely amazing have you guys ever seen a bear like this i have never in person isn't that something Again, this can't go in the John bag. I don't, I'm afraid he wouldn't make it through travel. They are fragile. They, they are fragile. A lot of times you'll see the eyes have come loose or the tongue's fallen back in the head. So, oh, and he's enjoying his, his oh, he loves life living here in here. England. He loves living here in England. And he's really, really special. Oh, another one, Rachel. A little bit have to hurry, but look at this. Oh, I love this <gasps> one. Look at that. I absolutely Striped. love this one. Isn't he wonderful? The little Chad Valley in stripes. Look at this. Here we go. Look at, there's his label. The Hygienic Toys Made in England by Chad Valley in striped mohair. In striped. Mo Have you ever hair. seen one in striped? I've seen one in a book. Mm -hmm. This might be the one I saw in the book, but I've never held one in my hands. Just remarkable. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Just remarkable. He's going to go in the John bag, too. I think we'll put him back. I think you could probably get away with it since he's on the bottom shelf. Yeah, I mean. He, he, okay. We, we are nowhere near done. I'm sorry if I'm rushing through. But there are cases and cases and cases of bears. Well, it's your highlight tour. Oh, it's, it's your just, highlight tour. This we're is, rushing through this. Well, but, and no, this is this is wonderful. We are enjoying we every second. Everyone needs a Kramer case. <laughs> I feel like Vanna. And Why here we have the we have the Kramer case. Now look at this. One of the rarest Kramers. Look at this. He's a mechanical. Oh, he's so special. Amazing. Look at this. Oh, how cute. In the clown, his original clown outfit. And when you wind the key, he walks back and forth. I've also seen the mama holding the baby and she um, feeds the baby the bottle. These are super, super rare. Look at oh, that. Oh, I just love his little feet. Well, look at the, the yeah. hair. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> the mohair yeah. is just, it's so cute. And Kramer did the embroidered mouth with lips. Oh, I just love that. Yeah. It doesn't even look like a bear. No. It, it almost, it's just like some kind of character. And, and again, she has one, two, pro, two shelves full. Three, actually. And then, oh, here's the bear toy bearkin. The toy bearkin was done for F.E.O. Schwartz, and it came with an outfit and also a little suitcase. Look at these. Look at him. Oh, man. Look at his little shorts. Look at his, <laughs> oh, and his little jacket. Oh my gosh. It's so, oh. it's, and it's, he's so little, everybody. I mean, yeah. look how, how tiny that is. I he's mean, they're wonderful. just so special. And they have their little original outfits. Look at the family here. Look at this. Just dreams. Dreams. And then she's even got this glorious one. Look at this. This glorious mohair. It was originally oh, tipped. Oh, look at it. It's beautiful. But a it's lot, like tipped. on the Kramers, unfortunately, a lot of the tipping sometimes faded off pretty, pretty rapidly. And look at his face. Just gorgeous. Just out of this I world. I love the embroidery of the mouth. I'm shaking just holding him. Oh. It's just so, this is such an exciting thing for me to be able to It's show an exciting you these thing for us so to, to rare, experience rare it with you. These were done in Germany again in the late 20s. And... 30s and then oh wait a minute oh this one's a remarkable this guy. absolutely remarkable this is a jopey i believe this is a jopey and look at him look at the color this is just gorgeous rose color oh i love him i know have you guys picked a favorite yet virtual conventioneers this is this is just 
the most unbelievable thing. Have you picked a favorite? I have not picked a favorite quite yet. I am still, <laughs> I am still deciding. Adrian is standing here to make sure I don't take anything. No, I, I've no, got nothing. Is the security I've here? I've got nothing. Um, is, who's the last one? Margaret. Margaret, she's not out here. Oh, she's not? Okay. This is her Bing case. A Bing case. Bing was a company that was early. They started in about 1912, approximately, in Germany. They were known for their mechanical toys and their mechanical bears, and they incorporated that into their teddy bears which was really fun and, and made for great, great pieces. And she has such beautiful examples. Here is a great example. I'm not gonna wind him up, but you wind his side and his head would go back and forth. Wow. I mean, just look at him just so fun by the 1920s and 30s they become more elongated with a much stronger appearance look at the color on this guy oh rachel it's like a light oh, pink. oh this is so beautiful again we're gonna swing back by and just you know look John at this bag. better <laughs> do you have a favorite color of colored bears or do you just love i love every, you know yeah. i love colored bears just because they're so different they're so vibrant you put them in your collection they just make a whole collection pop right which is yes. really fun and you know they weren't as popular as the bear colors so there's fewer of them oh they're so rare Just so you can get a great shot of this guy's face. He has got such a gorgeous look at this guy. Oh, look oh, at that. That wow. very strong, long muzzle. Bing really was known for with the beautiful stitching on the nose. Amazing. Really, really special. Get up so you guys can see that. Just, just you want to take him home. Oh, I just love that. And then look collar. at this great white one with the long, long mohair. Look at this, the long, luxurious mohair. He's probably from the 20s to the 30s. And this one is early. I would say this one is probably from around 1912, 19, and he's got the side button. The later ones had a different tag on their arm. Right here, you can see the difference. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, see the difference? That's this remarkable. guy's much earlier. He's the got arm. This. The arm is earlier, right? This is earlier. That is earlier. Yes, on the side. And a lot of times the paint is um, rubbed off, so it just looks like a silver button. So, lesson. Check those bears out. See if there's any identifying marks under the arms, Always. in the ears, on their butts, wherever you think there might be a mark. And when you find one, that's, that's it really special. It makes it so much more fun. Look at this. I mean, she's got shelves full. It's just, it's such a joy to see such great examples, just to show you. So it'll help you identify some of the bears in your collection or give you an idea of what to look for in your collecting, which Absolutely. is really important. Because you don't see this many examples in one place very often, so it's such a joy. Here's an early Bing pig with yet another button that they did it was a metal arrow look at that yeah. oh my gosh it's amazing look Isn't at that, that arrow something? that's incredible that that's still yeah. there i mean we're so lucky to have it to show other collectors absolutely what, how they identified and you guys and can you can take pieces. screenshots of this video and you can also pause it and take screenshots yeah. so that you guys can yeah. and then print them out and make a little album file absolutely We're only halfway through, people. This is just <laughs> overwhelming. Now, one of my favorite pieces oh, in the Oh, these whole are world. adorable. I'm going to move this so I can show you. Master Teddy. Look at Master Teddy. So cute. Dean's Master Teddy. Look at him. Made by children in about 19... She has 1915, that's right. 
Look at these eyes. Look at I the cannot, eyes. They are so googly. And that one's pointing that way. And yeah. that one's pointing that way. That's how I feel some days. Me too. But he's got a smile on his face. <laughs> he's happy. But isn't he special? So special. And then special. look at this guy. He's so different. Look at him. Again, with the eyes. Yeah. They just tried to make him so cartoonish. I love it. They make you happy. It's like the Einko pieces, Tubby and Fifi. Sometimes, you know, you just look at them and you laugh. And it just makes your whole day that much better. These have got to be on the bucket list for a lot of collectors. Yeah. And then we're going to come in this room. And I think Isn't this we can just, just so sweet? pan and finish off this program just with her absolute genius as far as display. Gives you some it's great so ideas whimsical. on how to display your pieces. Not that we all have this gorgeous stone building, but her idea of how to display them. Well, There's you just a big sit down for gold. tea. There's a big gold um, German music bellows bear. Next to it is another Hecla with a beautiful rust nose. So sweet. And look at this, everybody. They're all sitting down for their little tea party. Yes, everybody has to have tea when we're over here. I mean, her vehicles and, and her hospital of the veterans. They just had Remembrance Day. Isn't it just so sweet? You can express so much of your emotion through your teddy bears and your collections and how you choose to display it. And she has a great selection of identification guides. I can't stress enough that you need to get books. Buy every book you can on teddy identification or, or teddy... Um, price guides or collecting it's really important to have that library to refer to oh it looks like somebody's going to be taking a bath or so sweet oh and then they're at the beach for them it's not 39 degrees outside they're at <laughs> they're on the coast they're on the coast oh, enjoying the beach look at the two in the back in their little boat it's just so playful i just love the imagination and all the time that has been put to and this put them together like this. Children guy, oh look at that face! Isn't he special? Just so squishy. You just know <laughs> a little kid loved him and loved him and loved him. Just some great faces. Hillary's also going to be having a stand at the show that we're doing on Sunday. I have to hit her table. How oh. fantastic. Well, I want to thank you, everybody, for joining us in England. And I'm so honored I could bring this experience to you. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Rachel, for doing the VDC. This is such a great way for all us to join together and be collectors together and enjoy each other's habits. Not that we have a habit. There's nothing wrong with what we do. It's not an addiction. There's nothing wrong with it. But now I have to go get my John bag before <laughs> anybody comes in here. And remember, it's between us. Nobody needs to tell Hillary. Nobody needs to tell. And I'll make the payments. Whoever wants to blackmail me, feel free. Okay, <laughs> thank you Ford, again. Thank, thank you, you, Rachel. This was incredible. I've enjoyed this. Now I'm going to enjoy can... the rest of my holiday in England. You're the best, John Port. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye.